Hi, I'm Monica, and today I will show you how to do crow pose. Crow pose is a really great and fun arm balancing pose, and I really recommend to build up strength first with poses like plank pose or chaturanga to really build up strength in the arms so you are able to do crow pose. But even if you don't have a perfect chaturanga, you can do crow pose and you can use props to help you and you can always practice towards it. And then one day you will see you can do it. And I have today here two blocks. You can use something else like a stable box or a book to support you and you need um, something really soft like a cushion or a blanket if you are afraid of falling which is totally normal i mean <laughs> everyone is so to begin um we are in a squat pose and again before you practice crow do plank and chaturanga so check out my videos for plank and chaturanga before you go to crow pose but if you have done this already then spread your fingers really wide so imagine like the feet of a crow they don't have feet like this it's like this so you really spread your fingers apart and then the index finger is pointing forward so your elbows won't go out and some people need to that they even turn the hands even more slightly out so you have the elbows inside and uh, the hands are about shoulder distance apart or a little bit a little bit closer and then you go on your tippy toes from your squat and then you place the knees as high as you can on your upper arms and lean forward so nothing fancy yet you just play with shifting your weight forward and you have your blanket or your cushion something really soft in front so you can do it without being afraid falling on your face and this is one key point if you're afraid of falling then you probably won't <laughs> do it in crow pose because the key is to overcome this fear and then you will be able to do it so again we go on your, our tippy toes, placing the knee on the upper arms. Fingers spread, pushing into the hand. And then you bend your elbows a little bit. So the, the arms, they become like a little shelf. You reach your sternum forward and you don't look really super in front because you want to have a nice long neck. And then you play with, again, shifting your weight in front and then back and in front and back and in front and then stay here belly in engage the core and now maybe you want to lift the left foot bring it down and then the right foot and notice where your weight is if your weight is here, it will be super hard to lift it or you can do it, but there is no weight in the upper arms. You really should feel your weight on the upper arms. And I know at the beginning, <laughs> this can hurt a little bit until you become used to it. When I started practicing crowbars, oh my God, it was such a pain here. But um, I continued practicing and with time, I didn't feel anything anymore here because you know your body gets used you will build up muscles you will build up strength and then it's not painful anymore and a lot of people with wrist 
pain. Um, they struggle a lot with cropos, of course, because it's a lot of weight here. But also here, it's super important to not press down the hands on the little finger side. So you should really press down on the side of the index finger and the thumb and this part in between. So this is for all arm balancing poses and also blank and chaturanga. It's so important to not push on the pinky finger side, but the knuckles from the index finger are pushing down, the thumb is pushing down and the part between the thumb and the index finger. Okay, and now again, go on your tiptoes and place your knees on the upper arms and shift your weight forward. So from here, shift my weight forward. Don't be afraid, you have something to support you. Even if you fall, you would fall soft. And then again, lift up the left leg, add the, the left foot and the right. Okay. So now we can use two blocks or one block is also good, on the lower side. And now you can start by stepping on the blocks. And we do the same. So remember, spread the fingers wide, index fingers turning forward, or you can put it a little bit slightly more um, on the outside, the fingers. And then go on your tiptoes, bring your weight on the upper arms and now automatically your weight is a little bit more in front and maybe now you can lift one foot and the other so this really helps if you have troubles with lifting the feet up and there is another way we could use the block so i have one block now here on the higher side to support my forehead. So really be careful. Just try it out, play around with it. Be careful with your neck. Again, fingers spread wide. We are in our yogi squat. Then we go up a little bit with our seat, bringing the knee on the upper arm. And I have it too close, so <laughs> it should be a little bit further from you so you can place your forehead on the on the block and now maybe you can lift one leg and the other leg or maybe you're ready to lift both feet and you're supported with the block so but again be careful with your neck here so if you're supported here you don't want to have it this, you see, you don't want to have your a compression in your neck. So you want to have the block here and not here. So it should be really on the upper part of the forehead where the hairline starts to support you. Okay, now let's try crow full crow pose and i think there is a lot of confusion about crow pose and grain pose and there's also baby crow so baby crow is on the forearms so we do the same on the forearms like this and then grain pose or at least this is what i have been taught is when you have your knees really in the armpit super high up and and um, crow pose is when you have the knees on the upper arms a little bit lower but for the beginning if you're working towards crow i think you have to find a place on the upper arms where it feels stable for you and it depends on your propor proportions also so 
if you observe me while I'm doing crow pose, I'm not super high up. I'm something like in the middle. But for you, it might, might be easier to have your knees really high or a little bit lower. And this, as I said, depends on your proportions. So I go on my tippy toes. I really firm the forearms towards each other. I really push them towards each other. The hands into the mat. I look a little bit in front, but I have a soft neck so I don't crunch my neck. And then I place my knees on the upper arms and I lift one feet from the mat. My weight is super in front. And then the other feet comes up and here I am flying and the belly is super engaged to so the navel is pushing up towards the spine. And now I come down. And maybe you've seen, so my, my knee was like here, like in the middle. And um, for me, this works best. And maybe at the beginning, it's good to find a point where you feel more stable. So try it out. If I, for example, go a little bit upper, a little bit further up with my knees, it's harder for me. But try it out and play around with it and you will find the right spot where you can do it. And use the props, use uh, something soft or yeah, even, even a, a pillow from your bed, something really soft. You take away this fear of falling and if you conquer this fear, then you can do it and use blocks and whatever you need. And most important, enjoy the journey, really. It's so fun to, to explore and to discover. And one day you will, you will be able to, do, to go a little bit farther. And then the next day it doesn't work at all. But that's part of the game. So really enjoy it. Let's do it one last time. So, all together, finger spread, pushing down through the knuckles of the index finger. The hands are about shoulder distance apart. The index finger is pointing in front and the forearms pushing towards each other. Elbows in. I come from a squat. I go on my tippy toes. I lift my hips and then I place my knee as high as possible or wherever you find a stable point. And then I pull my navel up towards the spine, so belly in. I look a little bit in front, but I don't look super in front. So I, I spot a little bit in front of my hands. And then I lift one feet and then the other. And breathe. Don't forget to breathe into this pose. Okay, I hope you like this and this tutorial could help you. So have fun while practicing and check out also my other videos. Subscribe, do not miss any of my videos or courses. I'm sending you, like always, lots of love. Namaste.